we're going to take a look at nucleophilic substitution. Substitution means taking the place of something else. For example, on the football field, a substitute player takes the place of another player. In chemistry, a nucleophile takes a place of an atom or group of atoms in a molecule. A nucleophile is a species with a pair of electrons that can attack a delta plus part of a molecule. For example, have a look at a hal halogenoalkane, the X represents a halogen atom. And remember, halogen atoms are electronegative, so they pull electrons towards themselves in that carbon halogen bond, so it's delta minus, leaving the carbon delta plus. The lone pair of electrons on the nucleophile is attracted to the delta plus carbon and attacks it. That arrow shows a movement of the electron pair, and that causes the carbon halogen bond to break. So we do a second arrow. As a result, the product, we see that the nucleophile has taken the place of the halogen atom, forming a new bond to the carbon, and we kick out the halide ion as a negative ion. So what types of nucleophiles could we have? Well, there are different nucleophiles. For example, a hydroxide ion can act as a nucleophile, or a cyanide ion, Cn minus, or an ammonia molecule. And the thing they all share in common is they all have an electron pair that can attack a delta plus carbon atom in a molecule, so they act as nucleophiles. The X represents a halogen atom. For example, it could be fluorine, chlorine, or bromine. So let's look at some specific examples of nucleophilic substitution. Hydroxide ions form alcohols when they act as nucleophiles. And we can see the mechanism is just the same as a general mechanism. Take an OH- ion with its electron pair and attack the delta plus carbon of a haloalkane or halogenoalkane. So we draw that curly arrow just stop short of the carbon, break the CCL bond. And then the OH- is going to take the place of the chlorine to form an alcohol, methanol, and a chloride ion. Now cyanide ions form compounds called nitriles. Have a look at the mechanism. A cyanide ion is Cn-, and it's the electron pair on the carbon that attacks a delta plus carbon of our haloalkane. Remember that curly arrow, stop short of the carbon, break the CCL bond, and then we're going to form a nitrile. Notice a carbon chain is now one carbon longer. When ammonia acts as a nucleophile, it'll form an amine. Again, it's the electron pair on the nitrogen that attacks the delta plus carbon of the haloalkane and breaks a CCL bond. And this time we stick our ammonia molecule into the haloalkane where the halogen was, but the three hydrogens are still attached, which means the nitrogen has four bonds to it. So notice that positive charge on the nitrogen atom. Don't miss that. And we can deprotonate um, that molecule by using another ammonia molecule to pinch one of those protons, and that removes that positive charge to give us an amine and an ammonium ion. But it doesn't stop there. We can get further substitution. Remember, ammonia is a primary nucleophile, but if we don't have enough ammonia, the amine itself can act as a nucleophile. Why? Because it has an electron pair. And the mechanism is exactly the same. Watch, the electron pair attacks a delta plus carbon, breaking the CCL bond. And this time, we now have two methyl groups attached to the nitrogen atom, and the nitrogen atom still has the two hydrogens attached to it, so it has a positive charge. Bring an ammonia molecule along, and we can remove one of those hydrogens, deprotonate, to form a neutral molecule, dimethylamine. And um, don't forget the ammonium ion as well. But it doesn't stop there. The dimethylamine also acts as a nucleophile because it also has an electron pair on the nitrogen, and it can therefore attack the delta plus carbon of a haloalkane. And watch what happens in the mechanism if it does that. The mechanism is exactly the same. Electron pair from the nitrogen attacks a carbon. CCL bond breaks. But this time, we're now going to have three methyl groups attached to our middle nitrogen. And that middle nitrogen still has the original hydrogen attached, so it needs a positive charge. Bring along another ammonia molecule. We can deprotonate that to form trimethylamine plus an ammonium. And don't forget to 
um, add the chlorine at the end as well because the chlorine was substituted by the amine. Okay, that's a Cl minus. But trimethylamine can also act as a nucleophile. Notice we still have an electron pair on the nitrogen. It's a really good nucleophile. So again, this mechanism is exactly the same. The electron pair on nitrogen attacks the delta plus carbon of the um, chloromethane, breaking the CCL bonds. And this time we now have four methyl groups attached to our nitrogen. So the nitrogen needs a positive charge, but we can't deprotonate it. So this is where further substitution stops.